Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I think it's uh, the time we start this presentation. Um, can we help close the door at behind? Thank you. So uh, I'm Bao Hua Yang from uh, Oracle, and today I want to share uh, with you uh, some experience when we designed the uh, uh, Oracle blockchain platform, and also some of the issues that uh, come from our uh, customers' feedback. And we also uh, will discuss the potential uh, solutions related to the issues. So this is the agenda for uh, today. It's, it looks uh, so many idioms, right? However, the first part is I want to uh, introduce the Oracle latest blockchain platform. And all the following 10 idioms is related to the uh, issue I want to cover today. Uh, include the CQ support in a smart contract, and also the data recover, uh, data backup recover, and also the ledger checkpoint and the pruning. Um, and the BFT and governance, performance, and privacy protection, uh, internet, internet work, work uh, protocol, and also the pluggable critical uh, implementations and uh, the auditing capabilities. Uh, I believe um, uh, maybe some of the issues have also happened in your own uh, environments. So how many guys uh, in this room have uh, adopt hub ledger technology in your uh, product or service. Please raise your hand. Okay, almost the answer. That's good. So um, for Oracle blockchain platform, we actually have uh, two editions. The cloud one is released uh, in two, uh, 2018, and also we have the on-premise one. Yeah. Some of the customers, they want to own uh, everything, all the data in their own data centers. And uh, we recently named as one of the uh, uh, leading blockchain uh, technology providers. And uh, quoted from uh, one of our uh, customers, we are, one, we are one of the best uh, blockchain platform. And uh, uh, we have uh, customers in several uh, areas. Uh, the two major ones include the, the supply chain, the finance, uh, and also the public sectors. And you, uh, it's uh, free to have a try, so you can just uh, follow the link to know, uh, get more information there. This is the um, overall architecture of the, uh, our cloud uh, addition of the blockchain platform. And uh, you can see, um, Take a, taking advantage of uh, Oracle cloud technologies, including our uh, identity management and event and all the other data protection and DB technologies, we build on top of that and we adopted the open source uh, hub ledger uh, fabric kernel. Um, and certainly we have uh, some enhancements on this open source kernel. Uh, for example, we um, enhanced the, the smart contract support. Uh, we provided the uh, fine grained access control. And uh, we also provided some uh, assistance tools related to the uh, consensus and also the governance. Uh, I want to uh, point that uh, our blockchain platform is totally uh, compatible with the open source standards like Hyperledger Fabric. So if you have a open source native Hyperledger Fabric deployment, you can feel free to connect with each other. And you can, if you have a on-premise uh, version, certainly you can connect with the cloud edition. It's totally compatible. So this one is the uh, uh, enterprise edition or the on-premise version. So compared with the cloud release, uh, with this on-premise deployment, you can control everything you like. And it uh, brings all the cloud release features into your own uh, console, into your own uh, operations. And uh, uh, you can deploy in your data center, and you deploy in some third-party data center, or even you just deploy inside Oracle Cloud. That's uh, all OK. And uh, also, they can be connected with each other to combine as a multi-network topology. Uh, on top of the open source hub ledger fabric, uh, we certainly uh, add uh, 
uh, some new features uh, for the blockchain developers and also the blockchain operators. It uh, includes uh, those uh, uh, like uh, the REST policy. Uh, it provided some uh, RESTful API to allow you to operate and uh, send the transactions to the blockchain network. And also, uh, we have the uh, secure support in the uh, smart contract. And uh, it uh, enabled the rich query, rich history query, and uh, it's easy to doing some analysis on top of all the ledger works, ledger data. And uh, in the past two years, uh, we are glad that we attract more than 115 customers and uh, more than 400 uh, trials. Um, all our uh, customers currently, uh, they, have, uh, they are from uh, finance service area, supply chain area, public sector healthcare area. Uh, most of them are adopting the cloud addition. And also some of the customers, they are using the on-premise deployment. Uh, for example, we have uh, uh, those customers who taking the blockchain technology in the product uh, environment. And uh, for example, we have the wall. Uh, they are using blockchain to track the battery uh, supply chain. And uh, we also have uh, Cargo Smart. Uh, the, uh, their consortium, uh, currently their consortium dominates the uh, shipment uh, business. And they can provide more than uh, five, uh, more than 15 million shipments per year. And also, we have uh, some uh, uh, customers on the online training and edu education. For example, the city, or the China distance education and the learning. And they use the blockchain to store the educational certificates. And certainly, we uh, support the customers of the finance uh, service area and the governments and also the healthcare area. I will see healthcare area it might be the next uh, very hot area to adopt uh, blockchain. Uh, you know, due to the coronavirus, uh, this time it's, uh, there's a increasing demand to distribute and also to uh, provide the, the health-related supplements. But uh, it's uh, very low efficient. It's not efficient you using the traditional centralized system to record all, all the data. So blockchain might be promising in this area. So um, for the Oracle side, actually, we focus on the blockchain platform uh, layer. So we provided the technologies, uh, um, and uh, we work together with our uh, application team and our uh, uh, SaaS team and uh, the, the BI. Uh, SI and also we have those uh, uh, partners who work with us together. Uh, we provided the entire from the very top to the bottom solution to the uh, end customers. And uh, the ecosystem actually is uh, very open. So it's uh, uh, welcome everyone to, to join if you feel interested. OK, so based on all these uh, uh, developments and also the feedbacks of the real case customers, we have summarized uh, some of the issues that we need to address when you use blockchain in a real scenario. So the first one is CQ. Uh, lots of our customers are talking about this. They have developed applications using CQ for the legacy reasons. And uh, currently, they need to develop a smart contract. So why not we support that? Uh, there's some support uh, opinions. So Secure is already very popular, and uh, it can see uh, developer efforts if uh, your smart contract logic is, uh, you know, very complete. Uh, you, you, you can just uh, use Secure to let it keep the transaction consistency. Also, there are some uh, against uh, opinions. For example, Secure is uh, uh, not good in performance compared with uh, the pure key value storage. And uh, another uh, opinion is that blockchain contract itself should be kept very simple. 
you then you should not using the to using SQL to implement those very complicated logics inside a smart, smart contract. So how many guys are in support of this feature SQL in smart contract? Raise your hand. Okay, I see five. How many guys are against? One, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Okay. Um, fair enough. Um, our opinion is that uh, we think it's a good option. It's uh, it's uh, optional to uh, to your customers because uh, we have some of the vision that um, the no CQ <laughs> events and no CQ activities actually recently is becoming is adding more and more features from the CQ. It's become uh, very similar as the, the CQ and. Uh, uh, our platform, we support the CQ uh, rich data structure actually from the very beginning. And uh, we uh, use the open source Berkeley database. Uh, that's to let the uh, customers, that they can follow those open source and open standards. They do not need to bind to those proprietary products like Oracle database, right? And uh, we are our experience and also the evaluation we found that the performance is uh, very good to support more than 2,000 uh, TPS. It's uh, good enough for most uh, use case. And uh, uh, our enterprise customers, they have a very positive feedback with this uh, feature. They can just uh, use the uh, tradition uh, CQ grammar inside the smart contract and uh, everything will be handled by the CQ uh, database itself. Another requirement is uh, related to data backup and uh, recovery. So um, um, the customers think it's useful if we can provide the node backup and recovery capability to, and to keep the node resilience from those data corruption. And uh, especially when you want to migrate a node from one data center to another one, then, then we think this uh, feature is very useful. And also there are some against uh, opinions, uh, like uh, blockchain itself is already distributed. It's a distributed system. You do not need to keep uh, every part, a single node to be resilient enough, right? And also uh, the blockchain node is uh, very cheap to create. It's easy to create. You can feel free to add uh, as many peers as you, as you want. So how many guys support this uh, opinion? One, two, three, four. Okay, four. So how many guys are against? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven again. So in theory, we totally agree that single node should not be kept uh, as, re as resilient. Yes, from an entire network system point of view. But in fact, if you operate the, the blockchain network by yourself, in real case, you will find that the time of uh, sync up the data is, is a disaster. So it, it will depend on your network disk, as, uh, as CPU performance, and any time to rebuild all the uh, database related to the world state and also the history database. Um, some real number from the, uh, from the uh, experiments that uh, the ledger with more than one million transactions, if you want to recover that for a node, then it may require more than tens of minutes. So it's, it's very unpredictable uh, for the real use case. That's why we designed some tools to um, achieve this data backup and recover uh, functionality. So if we want to backup, uh, what data should we backup? Uh, we, have an, uh, we have analysis of the, uh, the different node rules, um, like uh, the, the Fabric C node. Uh, you need to take care of the credentials, database, and also the configurations. And uh, for the other node, you need to take care of the uh, certificates, uh, the credentials, the, the, the config, and the raw data, and also um, those blocks. 
you can you may can uh, you may see the the red blocks. All all these uh, red blocks need to be handled manually. The only thing you do not need to handle that is the those, those in the green box. That's the index database and the index database and were stated in the for the peers. However, uh, in real case, um, it takes a huge of time to uh, rebuild this index database and also the 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 worst state database. So actually, mm, from a practical purpose, you need to actually handle all of the data by yourself. So that's why we think uh, we need to uh, do the data backup and recover uh, functionality. Another question is related to the ledger checkpoint. So ledger checkpoint means uh, you can uh, let all the members of some channel they uh, have some agreement on the Snapchat snapshot. Then we some know join the new channel or they uh, just uh, restart. They can from the the snapshot Snapchat point, not from the very beginning. So that can this can reduce the amount of time. And uh, also, this can save the storage, and uh, the, it also can help somehow in the performance. So this, um, and we also have some against the opinions that the storage itself is uh, cheap. You you do not need to save that. And uh, if there's no full ledger, there's there's only snapshots, then it will require more operations to query the transactions. So it's not, not very uh, efficient. So how many guys in support this opinion? Whoa, more than 10, I can't count. So how many against? Only one, okay. <laughs> yes, we, we agree that um, this feature has been discussed uh, quite a while, since uh, like uh, more than three years ago. And uh, for those high performance users that uh, thousands of transactions per second users, this is a mandatory feature actually. And it's a very common requirement. Uh, however, we, we do not have a native solution uh, for these issues. But we, we have some workaround that you can store the blockchain files ex externally. You do not need to put it inside the, into the the storage system with on the peer nodes, and uh, when there is some query related to the block and the transactions, you can access the external storage. But that's only a workaround. There's some ongoing work uh, related to FAB 106, and uh, hopefully it can be done uh, this year. Next one is the uh, Byzantine fault tolerant consensus. Uh, certainly, BFT is uh, better than CFT in terms of uh, trustworthy, right? And uh, we can see that a number of blockchains have already supported, including those public chains and some other consortium based blockchains. But there are still uh, against the opinions that, um, especially for the enterprise scenarios, everyone has uh, has has uh, ID and uh, every operation can be controlled by the permission list. So BFT here does not uh, uh, matter too much. And on the other hand, the BFT uh, has a poor uh, performance compared with the, the CFT, and it can handle less failures compared with the CFT. So how many guys uh, uh, support this feature? Okay, almost 10. Uh, how many guys are against this feature? One, two, three, four. Okay, five. Okay. So we agree that it, this is a, a not very common uh, requirement related to enterprise blockchain. But for some specific scenarios, like uh, some specific scenarios inside of the finance area, this is required. So there is a uh, not there's no practical solution uh, for this problem yet, but uh, I believe we can have some. Uh, we can take advantage of some recent academia work, uh, including uh, the first one. Uh, it's the Algorand. Uh, maybe 
no, it's the Tendermint. Maybe some guys have heard of that. It's uh, not a, a published work, it's, uh, but it's uh, have been adopted by uh, several blockchain, public blockchains. Uh, the performance is good, it can achieve more than 1,000 TPS. And uh, basically, it's a simplified uh, practical balancing fault tolerance algorithm implementation. And uh, it uh, uh, selects part of the validators inside of the, the network. And each one just uh, take the, the sequence to uh, become to propose all the to propose the request into the network, and also when there's some uh, uh, wheel change happening, uh, everyone is uh, uh, consists we are some virtual empty block. Another work is the Elegrand. Um It's a very new work um, proposed by MIT Lab. Um, it's it's um, the motivation is uh, to enhance uh, to increase the the throughput compared with the Bitcoin projects. It claims to be thirty times faster than Bitcoin, and uh, it also adopts some uh, uh, crypt crypto uh, data functionality. It uh, named uh, ver ver verifiable random function, and uh, to select only parts of the members. They can become the proposer of the network, and uh, it uh, requires a very strong, uh, uh, requ very very strong uh, synchronizing uh, network condition. So it's uh, only suitable for those uh, crypto coins scenario. It's not uh, uh, suitable for the consortium blockchain. The third one is a uh, uh, mirror BFT. Uh, it's uh, proposed. Uh, last year, and uh, it uh, claims to uh, achieve more than 20,000 TBS uh, in a one environment. Uh, it's also an increase, uh, increasing work, um, improved uh, based on the, the PBFT algorithm, and uh, the, uh, the unique advantage of, of, of this algorithm is that it can allow a concur concurrent proposal uh, in the network. And the first one is the hot stuff. You guys may have heard this name uh, in the liberal white paper. Uh, it's a very new work. Uh, it's a change that the, actually, I, I think this work changed the, the consensus model. It uh, increased Change it to, from two phase uh, consensus confirmation to a three phase confirmation, and also uh, it uh, um, rely on some central, uh, not central, but some leader node to reduce the combination cost. Uh, it, it, it is it is thought very promising in uh, improved uh, performance of the consensus. Okay, those are the. Academia works. So, how about today's uh, hyperledger fabric? How about the BFT work there? Actually, since the very early version of 0 0.6, we already have some BFT implementation in fabric, but it's uh, very buggy and uh, the performance and scalability is not good. And in 1.0 and uh, the 1.3 version, there's uh, no official support of BFT in uh, hyperledger fabric. But we have some third-party implementation of that. Um, they have a Java-based plugin uh, to work with the fabric there. And but all these versions are have some lots of real issues. For example, uh, related to the config, they do not support the channel configuration there. And uh, there's some also some uh, ongoing work to re-implement this uh, BFT smart library. Using Golang, I wanted to, and I wanted to integrate into the Hyperledger Fiber project. Uh, maybe this year, maybe this year. The next feature is the governance capability. So governance is actually is different from uh, consensus. Um, so. Uh, if you guys have uh, used uh, uh, like a hyperledger fabric in real case, you you need you may know that we need to do lots of 
offline operations. Like we need to agree on who can join some channels and uh, uh, which order of service you can connect and uh, what kind of channel configuration you can change. Another uh, support opinion is that blockchain itself from uh, um, is, it itself is a multi-party system. So the governing uh, feature is a very fundamental requirement. Certainly there is some against the opinion. Like a blockchain, we should make it as decentralized, decentralized as possible. So those things not decentralized should be negotiated uh, totally offline. So how many guys support this uh, opinion? Okay, almost 10. How many guys are against that? <laughs> okay, I <laughs> run this feature. Yes, we, we agree that. We think it's very important to bring this uh, governing functionality into the enterprise blockchain. Uh, you know, when you negotiating those uh, uh, operations cross organi organizations, it, it's uh, very, very, it's very, very uh, low efficiency in, in theory and uh, very inconvenient in practice. And uh, there are several potential solutions. Uh, the first one is uh, we can have some uh, uh, special governing channel. You know, in today's hyperledger fabric, we already have uh, a system channel. It's used to uh, governing those uh, ordering service. So we can extend that, or we can have another specific channel to governing all other operations across uh, regions, across organizations. And the second one is uh, we can implement this functionality uh, using a new system chain code. I would call that uh, the, the governing uh, system chain code, GICC. And uh, the third one, if you do not want to change uh, any of the fabric code, you do not want to hack that, then you can use the, some external data service like a gateway to doing these uh, governing operations. I will see the second option using some system chain code way is uh, uh, very promising here. Because uh, in the new release, the Fabian 2.0, uh, you may see the, the life cycle of the chain code has already been voted uh, using some life cycle system chain code. So we, we can vote for the life cycle of the chain code. Certainly we can extend that to vote for other things like who can join the channel and which ordering service can be used. And uh, also we have a fabric interop team. Uh, we have done some uh, experiments uh, to test the interoperability between Oracle, IBM, and uh, other vendors' uh, 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 blockchain platforms. And uh, we used uh, a similar system chain code uh, to to doing uh, to do those uh, governing uh, functionalities, so we think this way is very promising here. Okay, the next one is uh, performance. <laughs> Lots of guys talking about performance. So, do you guys think uh, the customers really <laughs> care about uh, the performance? Uh, there's some support uh, support of, uh, opinions that uh, because everyone is talking about uh, performance. Uh, and uh, and also from the academia, we we can see lots of paper they publish numbers of from k to hundred k uh, throughput of the, the the distributed systems. But there is also some against the uh, opinions that uh, when talking about performance, uh, most of the customers they do not really understand what performance they are talking about. Are you talking about the throughput, the latency, the, the scalability? You're talking about the configuration. Are you talking about applic application layer or the system layer? And uh, for real uh, scenarios, I would see for most of the cases, uh, less than 1,000 through uh, TPS is uh, good enough. We only see a few uh, few real scenarios that require more than 1,000 TPS. On the other hand, uh, the performance itself it depends on uh, scenarios. 
for example, uh, we have four scenarios here. The the red one is the finance and IoT and the supply chain and healthcare. We can see they have different requirements with the throughput and also and the latency. And then we can adopt a different technology, uh, blockchain technology, from Bitcoin, Ethereum to Hyperledger. And when your customer uh, think they, they need you to do some uh, performance optimization work for them, and I think the first uh, issue you need to figure out is what performance you are, you are talking about. And the next question is, uh, what is the goal for the next uh, five years? You know, today due to the rapid development of blockchain technology, and uh, you, can, you cannot actually design a system that can work perfectly in more than five years. And uh, in terms of optimizing the Hyperledger fabric-based blockchain platform, uh, actually, it's a, it's a very systematic uh, work. You can see we have the chain code, we have the ledger, we have the consensus, we have the security, and they require different dimensions of resource. For example, the chain code typically it requires, it needs a lot of calculation, uh, so it's uh, compute compute sensitive, and the ledger will require a fast and a very large volume of storage. And the consistency is very sensitive with the network, I.O. the latency, right? So it's different things here. Another issue I want to uh, mention here is uh, when people are talking about performance, they only care about uh, some number for a uh, very uh, small scale or very specific topology. But uh, they ignore many uh, real issues. For example, you may notice that the with more and more ledger data accumulated, the performance when you run chain code, the same transaction will degrade. So why? The problem is that uh, for today's blockchain, uh, in order to uh, resolve those double spent problem, uh, each transaction will be checked with its ID, whether it uh, happened already inside the database. So it is actually impossible for today's fabric, hyperledger fabric based blockchain, you, you, whatever database you are using, from the open source uh, level DB or the uh, um, proprietary uh, Oracle database, no database can resolve these uh, issues. So in order to resolve that, um, the final solution is that we need to change the, the transaction ID generation algorithm but they need to uh, redesign the existing fabric protocol and uh, change the code. Another issue is uh, privacy protection. Uh, lots of people are talking about this uh, today. Um, so some guys think uh, data privacy is an essential requirement. And uh, for business side, data is, uh, is the top priority asset. And also, in order to align with those uh, security policy, we need to keep privacy protection. However, uh, when people, when, when they want to use blockchain, the, actually, it, it, it's you want to share data among multi-parties, right? M different members. And uh, another option is that, Another opinion is that um, you should not put those sensitive data uh, onto the blockchain. And all existing solutions based on cryptography, they have some trade-off in practice. So how many guys support this feature? Okay, more than 10. How many guys are against? Okay, no one. Yes, we agree that Privacy is uh, very important, and it, it's becoming the bottleneck in blockchain uh, scenarios. Uh, I, I, I have seen the customers, because of the privacy protection requirements, they uh, have to use the on-premise version of blockchain instead of the class one, and uh, they have to design their own blockchain instead of using the open source one, just because of the privacy requirements. 
we are glad that there are some features inside the Hyperledger fabric, like uh, the private DB uh, collection. Uh, it can help somehow, um, but uh, that's not good enough. Uh, in the 2.0 release, uh, there are some new features. Uh, it's called the implicit, implicit uh, collection. Uh, I would say it's uh, very promising, uh, and it's the fundament for further uh, flexible um, um, private collection design. Uh, you can pay attention to this feature. Uh, however, for all these uh, private collections, there's uh, uh, still the hashed uh, record inside of the public chains. So every member inside of the channel, they all see this hashed uh, uh, result. So my suggestion is, is that uh, you, if you care about uh, the data privacy uh, seriously, uh, please just encrypt the data before you put it onto the chain. Or at least uh, you can add some salt into the data in case to, um, uh, to avoid other members get uh, the statistical results from the hard results. Okay, the next one is the inter-network operation. So this feature has already been discuss discussed for quite a while. It's uh, to allow the different uh, blockchain network and uh, different blockchain technologies to connect with each other to switch uh, the data. And uh, uh, it can, it's very useful if uh, when uh, different vendors uh, they provided uh, uh, using different platform but they want to connect via the business layer. However, there is some also uh, against uh, opinion uh, like uh, today's enterprise consumer is uh, typically is, is not very large, right? Most of them are less than 30 members. So, and uh, they are uh, focusing on the same business scenario. So why not they just uh, using the same technology? So how many of you uh, support this? Okay, almost 20. How many against, who against? Okay. So I would say we totally agree that this is a very critical um, uh, requirement. And uh, when you think about that, you need to uh, think that what does inter-network operation mean? So is only support read data or, or update data or just uh, uh, you know, across different blockchain technologies, you just achieve some consensus. Uh, they are totally, um, I would say, different requirements. Uh, today, we have seen uh, many platforms built on top of Hyperledger, uh, especially the Fabric, and also there's Ethereum-based one, Quorum-based one. And uh, there are some uh, uh, standards for uh, cross-network or interledger, but uh, there's still no easy solution, I would say. Uh, most of those practical solutions, they require some uh, uh, extra effort, like uh, to introduce a uh, data gateway, uh, and uh, which will become uh, centralized somehow. Okay, the next one is the uh, uh, pluggable crypto implementation. So you may know today's uh, Hyperledger Fabric it, uh, using the Golang official crypto library to implement the international uh, standards. So um, it's, uh, not difficult, it's not easy to uh, support other uh, crypto standards. So especially in the Asia area, and uh, we have seen that the China, the Russia, and uh, potentially the EU, they have some uh, policy requirements to align with the original uh, crypto standards. Um, we have already created a, a fiber issue to track this, but uh, I will see uh, it's uh, not easy to do that uh, in uh, near uh, future. 
uh, there are several uh, companies in China they have uh, hacked the fabric code to implement to align with the China uh, crypto standards and uh, it's put on uh, github already but uh, there's uh, no official uh, support yet okay and uh, the last one uh, is the auditing capability so the argument here is that uh, the for enterprise service we we need some uh, auditing data for especially for the auditors and the regu regulators and uh, we need to uh, align with the security policy. The against the opinion is that uh, auditing um, it, blockchain itself does not need does not need uh, auditing because it's already there. Because blockchain ledger records uh, all the history of the data, all the history of the transactions. And uh, so another opinion is that uh, uh, the auditing can be implemented outside of blockchain. It's not uh, blockchain works to do the auditing, to support the auditing. And uh, especially with the fabric, uh, uh, hub ledger fabric, we have the operational API, RESTful API. So we can get lots of statistic data from it. So some of the auditing data can be abstracted from this data. So how many support this one? Okay, almost 10. How many against? One, two, three, four. Okay, thank you. I will say uh, auditing itself is uh, highly demanded in special industry like uh, the finance. And the auditing functionality is, uh, is different from logging, from different from operation statistics, and also different from tracking. So, if we can have some auditing API from the uh, Hubble Fabric code base, that will save uh, lots of uh, time. But currently, people can still use the uh, operational metrics API and uh, we are the logging analysis. They can get uh, part of the, the auditing data they want. And this already is tracked with a very early uh, Fabric issue. Okay. Uh, at the end, I would also uh, encourage uh, all the uh, people here to try the Oracle blockchain for free. And uh, we recently published some uh, electronic books and uh, the online uh, tutorial. And uh, there will be a new book to introduce uh, Hub Ledger Fabric 2.0 technology. Okay, uh, thank you. Any question? So I don't think this is a question, but just uh, some statement, right? So you, you are, okay, you are suggesting we compare the uh, different goals between BFT and the CFT, right? Yes, that the special value from BFT, right? The special value from BFT. Okay. Okay, uh, I, I assume um, everyone should be familiar with this BFT and CFT. If you guys do not know that, 
uh, in summary, actually, BFT can handle those malicious nodes with uh, the fake message, right? But CFT itself just uh, to handle the node corruption. So there is no fake news. So that's, uh, that's I agree that the total different uh, uh, scenarios. So that's why I said in some special uh, scenarios like uh, finance, they have the requirements of BFT. Do we have more Mac? Maybe you can just use this one. So my only point is on, I worked for Fidelity for five years in infrastructure services and architecture on security, all kinds of stuff. And so in the, it, like your, uh, your um, security account, trading stocks and stuff like that, all of that is critical data. The argument I have is it doesn't matter what the solution, is, what the implementation is, what matters is the outcomes. And so we're focusing on what the requirements are for the outcomes that we have to achieve. And BFT is a strategy, different implementations of BFT, but it's just a strategy on how to guarantee an outcome, right? That in effect, the data hasn't been hacked or maliciously uh, changed for a distributed database problem. And so all I'm saying is that there's other architectures to look at to solve the problem, to get the same outcomes that really haven't been thoroughly examined, in my opinion, in this space yet which is why I look at for different options coming forward, they're gonna be significantly different. Just like we had consensus changes before that says, oh, everybody on a Bitcoin network had to agree with something. And somebody says, no, 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 wait a second. We can have other algorithms that implement consensus differently, right? That pr provide protection, randomized voting and all kinds of stuff. But I'd argue the same thing is true of BFT. It's just a strategy to solve a problem. And if you look at the problem, we should look at other strategies. Yes, thanks for the, the statement. Actually, you're talking about uh, the stra strategy layer, actually, right? The strategy layer, strategy point of view. Yeah, but, uh, well, it's, uh, it's, I would say strategy is a uh, uh, multi-layer uh, point. You can talk about strategy from business and the technology, so cost, right? And uh, some, so I, I don't think it's a technical issue here. But um, uh, the slide, the topic I cover here, compared with BFT and CFT, is just from the technical side, the so algorithm. Yeah, but that, that's a good point. Sure. Thank you. Other questions? You talked about uh, integrating the Hyperledger fabric with uh, Ethereum, uh, right? Uh, how you are doing this using your uh, Oracle pl platform? Uh, how you are doing this integration uh, now between uh, Hyperledger fabric and uh, Ethereum? So the question is uh, um, the integration between Hyperledger fabric and Ethereum, right? Uh, since I remember, if I remember correctly, since uh, 1.2 or 1.3, the Hyperledger Fabric already supports uh, to run the Ethereum smart contract on top of it via the borrow project. So it's uh, already possible. Okay. He's first. There was a falling one. Okay. Okay. So, I just want to say, um, hmm? you say you didn't ask for voter performance. Performance is important. 1K transaction per second is a, it's just like saying 48K RAM under 8080. Yes, I agree with that. But I, I just want to say that uh, performance is a complete problem, not that straightforward. But it, it needs to be maximized. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm not sure whether there's a falling section, so maybe we can discuss uh, offline. Okay, thank you.